Welcome to another edition of the Sim Racing Garage. I'm Barry Rowland. In this episode, we'll be reviewing the DD1 wheelbase from the guys at Fnatic, and we'll be taking a look at the latest and most major firmware update for the Podium DD wheelbases to date, promising to deliver noticeable performance gains for these wheelbases. Time to put it through the SRG's review process and see how it does. So, let's get to it. The Fnatic Podium DD1 Wheelbase. Now, as you guys know, if you've been watching my channel, that I've already done a review on the DD2 that you see sitting over here. A, a more comprehensive review than I'll do on the basics for this, because essentially, these are the same wheels, the same wheelbases. This one has been detuned to a max of 20 newton meters, while DD2, we can get 25 newton meters max out of that one. Otherwise, the motors are the same, which is actually a good thing. I mean, everything else being the same is a good thing in my book because, you know, the Outrunner motor actually is a very capable motor. It delivers torque very quickly. So, yeah, I, I kind of actually like the way this Outrunner motor works. Now, there are some differences, though, right? And the differences are reflected in those prices. First difference I want to show you is the weight. <laughs> you would think they would weigh exactly the same. But, yeah, there's a little bit of difference here. So, let me put this guy up here. All right, so the DD, huh, of course. <laughs> and my scale just timed out just as I wanted to put this on here and show you guys how much it weighed. So we'll try it again. All right, here we go. All right, so that's grams and that's 10,050 grams, right? So let's take that DD2 over here, put it on. 9,900 grams. All right, so they're pretty close, right? 990, so this is actually lighter. That's what the, the curious thing here is the DD2 is lighter than the DD1. Why, why is that? Probably because this, the DD2, sports some carbon fiber covers, and the DD1 has got the aluminum ones. And just for the heck of it, because we love doing this stuff at the SRG, Let's weigh one of the aluminum panels here. I th I'm assuming they're aluminum. 86 grams. 84, 86, 84. <laughs> Below one, it's 86. <laughs> All right, so we'll go with 84. Now let's take the same side off of this DD2. If I can get it to cooperate here. There we go. And see how much it weighs. 56 grams. Ah, so there is a difference. So I would assume that that's what the difference is. is. These panels are carbon fiber versus the aluminum ones and yeah other than that and I'm pretty sure everything is identical inside of these wheelbases and you know weight will kind of tell you that too so no need to try to go inside and look at the wheel if you want to see a, a little peek inside of these uh, one of these the, do the uh, go to the DD2 review that I did and I actually kind of pulled the back off and took a look inside a little bit where I could to see what that looks like anyway so other differences between the DD1 in the DD2, of course, price, we got $1,200 for this, or $1,199, $1,900, $1, and $1,500 for the DD2. Again, 20 newton meters here, 25 over there. And we also have a three-year warranty on the DD1 versus a five-year warranty on the DD2. Now, a curious thing is both of these are Xbox capable or compatible if we have the Xbox wheel to stick on the front of this, right? But they're not PS4 compatible, and according to... Fanatic's website, it says there's no way to upgrade these or make these PS PlayStation compatible, which is curious because you can get a PS compatible Podium DD wheel, the DD1, it is called the Podium Racing Wheel F1. That package is $1,599 or $1,600, so you get the wheel with it that's a PlayStation wheel. The F1 wheel has is, is, is got the PlayStation chip in it, whatever, you know, whatever it requires to run on PlayStation. So... It's curious that even with that wheel, from what I'm reading on their website, if you put that wheel on here, it won't work. It won't be a PlayStation compatible direct drive system. So that is curious that that's, they worked it out that way. But anyway, what else are the differences? Um, really, not a whole lot. It's, you know, you know, we already went on the warranties and price and, of course, torque. Other than that, we saw the weights are the same. So we'll take a look at the, the back ports here, which are all, this, again, exactly the same as the DD2. And let's see if I can get that close enough. You guys can read that. The most important one to me here is that torque key port, the second one at the top next to the 
CAN bus plug. So yeah, the torque key is going to unlock it to 20 newton meters, which I'll be running to that. And we've got an e-stop plug and, of course, some other plugs for peripherals, electrical over there on the left. And, of course, we have the USB over here on the right, too. At least that's my right. Yes, okay. Oh, no, my left. <laughs> your, my right, your left. <laughs> there we go. So anyway, you guys have probably seen a lot of reviews on the DD1 and the DD2 by this time. So, yeah, I'm not going to go in too much detail about all the other features and everything because it's exactly the same as the DT2, except for the torque, which in my book is a good thing. I like these outrunner motors. They do a good job on torque delivery. And I think in my DD2 review, I actually mentioned that, that you know, I, I couldn't find any bad habits in this wheel system. And that was on the early days firmware. Now we're all the way up to 352 driver package. So this video is being taped on the 18th of December 2019. So that's the latest new driver package and it's got some great feature set upgrades. And yeah, that's bringing up uh, some and some extra features, some really cool new features that they've been working on at Fanatic. And you know the guys have been working really hard and working overtime over there to work on the firmware upgrades and increasing the feature set capabilities of these wheelbases. So yeah, really not much else to, to really see here. And what I'll do is go ahead and mount this up to the rig. And we have the excellent, at least so far I think it's excellent, podium Porsche wheel that we're going to be using with it. So I'm excited about that too, because this is a great feeling wheel. I have a different video out on this one soon. Anyway, if you haven't seen it already, I might come out with that first. All right, so let's go ahead and get this on my SimLab uh, SimLab P1X or P1 bracket, the one that mounts on the sides here, get it mounted up to the P1X rig over there, and then we'll go over there and take a look at the new software and firmwares available and the feature sets that this, these wheels are now sporting. I wanted to go over some of the new software features and I'll go, I'll go into that in more in depth if I'm actually doing a live tuning session that we'll do after this, but just give you a look here at the Fanatic wheel properties, and of course, this is the devices and printers, and we go to game controllers, and then we bring this up under properties. And I just want to show you, uh, this is the normal suspects here. I'm not going to go over this because it's been going over many times. But you can see over here in the right-hand side, I've already got my driver at 352, which is the package you want to go get and, and load up on your wheelbase right now if you haven't done it, because it offers some great new features. So we have the wheelbase is at 669. The... What's this firm software firmware is eight and that's in the the wheel itself and then we have the hub i'm running a podium hub so it's it firmware too and we'll look at that again in a second but we'll go over here to the settings when you load your new driver package of five uh, rather three five two you'll be asked to sensor do a motor sensor calibration and when you do that it's going to prompt you to pull the wheel off and just have the motor sitting by itself and do this calibration. And you're prompted every step along the way here when you're doing this driver upgrade. So if you take your time, pay attention, don't be in a hurry, you should be able to get through this pretty smoothly. I didn't have one hiccup at all while I was doing this. So I wouldn't imagine, unless there's some conflict with your computer somewhere, that you would have that much problem with it. Right, let's get to the tuning menu. And again, this is in the driver part. Again, properties. I'm not sure why anybody would be in here setting up the tuning when you can do it in Fanana Lab. Unless there's some reason Fanana Lab doesn't run on your, your PC, then yeah, you can go in here and do the same kind of tuning. What I want to highlight here real quick is we, the new stuff going on. We have force feedback linearity, and we'll talk about that in a little more detail in a minute. And the other new one is going to be the force feedback interpolation filter. And this is a good one too. It, it, you can actually feel the effects of this one pretty good, smoothing stuff out for you. So anyway, you can go in here and do your setup if you want to, but we're not going to do that. I'm going to go down here to the update, and this is where you'll update your software once you load your driver package. Now, also when you load your driver package, what I typically do is I will uninstall the previous Fanatic driver package completely off my computer, reboot it, I'll come back in and then load the 352. After you load the 352 driver package, you'll be prompted to reboot again. So yeah, that's two reboots. But it seems to go a lot smoother when I do it that way, and I don't get in any troubles and have to be start troubleshooting things. So that's the way I do it, and it works pretty well. And again, you can see here, the driver's package is 352, and that gives us a wheelbase firmware of 669, and a motor firmware of 38. It's 
steering wheel is eight and our hub, podium hub is two. All right, so if you see that, you're good to go. So we'll click OK there and let's go ahead and get to the good part, the Fanalab app. This is the Fanalab version 1.23 beta. And I haven't had any problems with this, so you know, as far as I know, you should be able to load this and not have any issues. Of course, this, if you have this already, you know that it shows what devices it can identify, active devices as it calls it. We got a DD1, I've got the button module over here, but I'm not running the Fanatic pedals, and we are in iRacing. Let's go to the tuning menu. This is where the fun stuff is. Now, again, we have five profiles here, but as you well know, if you go to the game profile tab, I'll do that real quick, you can put a lot more profiles than that in there. So don't think you're limited to that. All right, so maximum steering angle. I usually leave that at auto unless there's a problem. Then I'll go in and set it up to what I think the car should be. 900, 725, 40, whatever the case may be. Unless I'm in another game where sometimes you're in the game and no matter what, you should be running at like 380 or something for things to work. But I can't remember which game I had to do that in. So I usually leave it at auto and everything's good to go. Overall force back strength, force feedback strength rather, is 100%, all right? So typically that's where I'll leave my motor force feedback. And again, I'll tune it in game to where I think it's comfortable for me, right? And that way the motor has its full power available to it for anything, any incidentals or anything. I tend to, to believe that you get more detail that way. Instead of putting this on like 60% and then going into the game and cranking that way up to get the feeling you want, because that's a good way to run into clipping problems. Anyway, that's the way I do it. You do it any way you want to. Linearity. All right, so let's see what the pop-up says here. Allows maximum peak force due to the nature of holding and peak forces. This can cause non-linearity during long, sustained, high holding forces. On reduces overall force feedback force to a level which guarantees linear behavior between peaks and holding forces. So basically what, what it's telling me is when you have this on, it's chopping off some of the peaks to keep it from jumping around so hard. Let's say you're in a turn and the turning forces are very heavy, all right? And heavier than obviously going down the straight on a track. And if you want to reduce some of that, this is a good way to do it. it and, but if you click on this, and I'm, when I'm doing a driving test, I'll, exp I'll describe that too. When it, so far, it just reduces the force feedback in general to me. And that's not really what I want. I don't mind extra forces on the wheel as I'm entering and, and peak apexing and exiting a turn. In fact, I believe that helps me a lot to, to figure out what the car is doing in the turn. But some people don't like that. It, you know, on a long race, I can see where that might be an issue. But yeah, I, I like to have everything that the wheel's telling me. But this will actually calm that down for you. And, and it actually reduces the, the overall force feedback experience. And again, you'll, be, you'll end up turning up your force feedback again when you put this on. But it's nice to have new filters coming out. Natural dampener, that's the usual stuff there that dampens the, the, the actual motor dampening. It's not influenced by the game at all, so I can put my dampening here for the motor. Right now, I have this at 25%. Natural friction, again, not influenced by game. It's default to off. It's to prevent oscillations, right? And you put, if you put too much friction in, it starts getting too heavy, and it just, yeah, it, it's, it's harder to turn because, well, it is friction. And it also dampens, though, the details of force feedback. So I try to be easy as I can with that one. Natural inertia. All right, simulates additional weight on the steering wheel. Again, another way to put more weight on the, on the steering wheel. Higher values make the wheel feel heavier, obviously. Uh, this can help make natural friction feel less sticky. Inertia can hinder the oscillations from starting, but will make already happening accidents worse. So inertia, yeah, regular inertia. I guess they're saying that the natural inertia is better because it doesn't do that, but I, I guarantee you I can do it with this inertia too. <laughs> Force feedback interpolation. Now, this is an important one. This is, you know, everything else is the same, except for, of course, the linearity. This is, it turns rough, low-resolution game force feedback into smooth effects. Now, I'm in iRacing right now, and that's typically what I run in. 60 hertz update signal, which is the slowest around. <laughs> so, it can be a bit ragged and imprecise you know, it, at those levels of, of being able to feel something like that. I mean, there's other ways to get around it, but that, in, that induces latency. So... I usually leave, leave that all alone. But here we go. This will smooth out some of those. If you feel like it's just too chattery or just too busy in your hands, 
then you can actually turn this up and it won't turn down the details. So it, does, it doesn't overwhelm the unnecessary noises. Anyway, it, it's, it's hard to explain exactly what this feels like, but it kind of just smooths everything out. So if you think it's too jagged, the wheels is just too sharp feeling in your hands, this is a good way to cure that without stamping or jumping and dampening, stamping on or jumping on the actual cues that you want to feel. And it's one of those things you have to use to realize how it really feels in your hands. Right. And the rest of them are just the regular force effect intensity. And keep this at 100%. Uh, game force strength. Let's see. Yeah, we don't... Uh, default's 100. I'm not sure why I have that at 120. That should not be there. That should be at 100. So I'm going to put that back to 100 right away. Okay. I was playing some other stuff earlier. I may have accidentally done that. Game spring effect. Now, this defaults to all the way on, 100%. Default is 100%. And also, the damper effect strength is at 100%. Now, iRacing doesn't use this. It, you know, it does its own thing, so it really is irrelevant in iRacing. But I keep it off because in my particular wheelbase, I actually had some artifacts that I felt when I was turning the wheel um, off-center, going in a straight line on a smooth piece of road. I could actually feel a little bit of of notchiness in there and when I took these off I tried to, I chased it for a little bit and I finally turned these off and it went away pretty much all together so I'm not sure why because it should not affect our racing at all the way I understand it so anyway just one of those things where you have to play with your wheel and get it to feel like you want to but if you feel some notchiness around center and you're in eye racing and you're in a game in other words it doesn't use this then or this will have supposedly no effect on that game then yeah just turn it off because if it's not an effect anyway, you know, you don't need it on. But yeah, that's what cured it. Strange thing, but that's the way it worked. Uh, brake pedal vibration, don't worry about that. Vibration strength, yeah, they're irrelevant. All right. So the biggest thing here, obviously, is the linearity and the force feedback interpolation. And that's probably what I'll be talking about the most. And yeah, so what we'll do, let's see. The dynamic force feedback, I enabled that. Of course, you can go in here and change the numbers for that. And I went over this pretty good. None of this has changed, it looks like. Uh, from the original Fanalab that I went over in DD2. Vibrations, I don't care about those. LED, this is where we can tune our LEDs to do what we want. And again, that looks like to be the same as it was before. Maybe a few changes here in the layout. Game profile, that's where we're going to be spending a lot of our time managing our profiles. And we can put a lot of profiles in here per game. Just pick your game over here on the left. All right. But the biggest thing about this this review on this wheel, the biggest thing I want to do is get in the car, drive it, and start describing what the linear force feedback feels like and what this interpolation feels like. So we're going to do that next. All right, so now we can actually get in here and do some driving. And I'm going to go ahead and move out onto the track. All right. I pretty much got the wheel exactly where I want it right now with the settings that I'm in. And it's doing a great job, actually. It's, uh, you know, I can tell a difference as far as the overall smoothness, but yet still has the detail that these wheels can deliver. Now I'm going to stop right here. And right now you can see I'm running at 100% for game strength. Now you can't see it, but I'm running at 65 newton meters on my force feedback max source in here in the game, but I'm going to show you a shot of that uh, while I'm talking about it. So I'm running 65 newton meter there, 100% up here, and also in the game I'm running at 19 newton meters max force. All right, so that's the way I have it tuned currently for the Ferrari 488 GT3 in Sebring in iRacing. Now, the one thing I wanted to show you here, or give you a, a, my reaction to, is this linear feedback. First, I'm going to go ahead and get up to speed here, and we'll get around some of these turns while we're driving. First thing about a force feedback, obviously, we want details, right? And this wheel's definitely giving me a lot of detail, and I like that. It's not as strong as I would like it to be, but then that's what the DD2 is for, right? <laughs> All right, so. So, it's, it's a heavy wheel now, as you guys might imagine, with the, the force feedback that I'm running. But, if I go into here for the linear setting, and I'm going to stop right here and do that. Because I can, I can feel going back and forth 
you know, the, the weight of the wheel the, because of the friction and the inertia and everything that I have dialed in, of course, the amount of torque. So I'm going to go in here and turn the linearity on. Remember, it says this allows the maximum peak force due to the nature of holding and peak force to cause non-linearity during long sustained holding forces, which is like in a turn where we're in a turn and you got a lot of, of force because of the the force on the tires and we're obviously in a, a corner and we're turning that those forces can get pretty high right but this was supposed to be able to and that's a, and, and then you feel the spikes from the bumps and things it's just not a steady linear feeling that some, some people just don't like that so I, I i don't care i've been doing it so long i'm used to it but this is supposed to reduce the overall force feedback to a level that guarantees a more linear behavior between these peaks in holding forces. In other words, the bumps and the G-forces that, 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 your, that your car is feeling, and you're feeling that strain with, against the tires as you're going through your, tor your turn. rather. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that on. And let's see, linear on. And right away, I guarantee you it's going to feel like, yep, I'm already feeling a lighter wheel overall, even though I'm, obviously I'm not moving and I can't really tell yet. but. All right, so let's go ahead and go through some corners. And yeah, right away, it's, it's a lighter feeling. It's overall smoother, obviously, because there's less force feedback power going in. I can still feel detail in the wheels, in the wheel rather, in the tires is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> and it's not, it's not like it's bad or anything. It's just a little bit, you know, when you're turning the force feedback down, obviously you're not gonna have the same sharpness of the details that you had before you hit the linear, right? So if you're having some sharp spikes somewhere, I could see where that could be useful to tune that out or tune it down before it's more comfortable. Unless you like a reactive wheel like I do, because it allows me to feel all the details. You can still feel all the details. I felt the details in the rumble strips I just went through. And yeah, it's all still there. It's just muted a little bit and it's, it's more of a altogether feeling and nothing really sticks out over the other thing. And I guess that's why they call it linear, right? <laughs> it's, it's curing those spikes. So again, this is something, once you have your wheel tuned, you should try yourself because everybody, you know, all this stuff's subjective anyway. So, you know, you may or may not like it. I turn it off because I just don't like what it's doing to the detail because, you know, like I said, if, if you're reducing force feedback, you're also reducing the level of the details you were once feeling, but you're also reducing the peaks that you may not want to feel. So just like most things in life, it's a bit of a compromise. And whether it's the right comp compromise for you, well, it's entirely up to you. But yeah, I like it with it off because the details, the sharp details are back now. I can feel everything that the car is doing, which is another testament to the overall improvement of this firmware package. It's feeling pretty good. I really can't complain about it, to be honest. It's, I'm looking for bad things. I did find one thing, but it, it, and I'm going to talk about that in a second, too. But All right. So, yeah, I leave the linearity off. And, of course, as far as the rest of the stuff we're looking at, I'll go ahead and stop here. The natural damper, natural friction, natural inertia, that's all totally subjective. It's up to you, right? Now we'll get down to the force feedback interpolation. All right. I have currently at 8. Now this is supposed to turn rough, low resolution game force feedback into smoother effects. So it's going to smooth out things for you. This is a great filter. I mean, it's like a, a one filter fix all kind of thing. Not really, but it's kind of like that. And I'm currently running at 8. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this thing down to, I'm just going to turn it off. There we go. I'm going to turn it off and try to describe what I'm feeling when it's completely off. It's going to be rough though. I know that it's going to be more jagged feel. In fact, I can feel it just turning the wheel like this. I can feel a grain in the in the wheel now. It's like a grain in it when you're going back and forth around the center here. So yeah, right away that smoothing is gone. And all these little bumps I'm hitting when I go off the road and everything, they're very, very sharp. Very, very sharp and I would call irritating. <laughs> so that's not the way you want to drive. And this is where this great filter comes into its own. I mean just putting it on one will take some of that away. Let's see how sensitive this thing is. All right, so here we go. Going over some concrete there. I felt that. Let's go over some curbing here or something. Yeah, I felt all that curbing, but it was, again, it's, it just feels very 
ah, I don't know, it feels sharp and loose and it just doesn't feel good at all. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and put it up to, a lot of people are, are gonna be running this, I think around five or six probably. I had mine at eight, but that was just playing around. I'm not sure exactly where I'm gonna land for this particular car in this track, because remember, all that's gonna change depending on the car and track that we're on. So here's five, and yeah, all that artifact stuff is gone now. It's very, it's much smoother turning it back and forth. So yeah, over some curbs. Let's go over this guy. <laughs> and it's still, I can still feel it a little bit sharper than I like it. So I can go in and change that up to six or six. There we go. And as you do this progressively while you're driving and then you get back, you know, you, you start driving again, you can start feeling the difference on the details. Like when I was that rumble strip, the rumble details that I felt aren't as sharp as they were before, right? Or if you run off the road and I'll go over some curbing here. Yeah, still a little bit sharper than I would like it, but pretty smooth around center now. Very it's smooth, very smooth actually around the center. And you saw that little bump, it just took a hit there. Yeah, that was, uh, like I said, a little bit sharper than I like it. But what the cool thing is, you're still getting all the details. You're just, I guess the best way to explain it would be, you're selecting the severity of the detail that you're getting, how sharp it is, all right? So, and again, this is gonna be completely a subjective thing, but you're gonna wanna be, I imagine, at least around five, six, seven in that area. At least that's what you know I tend to like. And depending on the car you're on, the track you're on, that can change also. But thank goodness we can change a lot of different, or rather save a lot of different profiles with this new Fanaleb uh, interface that we have here to work with. It's hard to talk and drive hard at the same time. Yeah, that feels, that feels pretty good actually. Where am I at? Seven, yeah, okay. Yeah, that feels pretty good. I think the reason I had it on eight was that before I was chasing a problem that I was having or an issue that I, found, I discovered. All right, so yeah, this is really a good feeling wheel now. Fanatic has done a great job. And like I said before, when I was doing the DD2 review, I'm just doing it back and forth just to feel what the center feels like. When I was doing the DD2 review, I said that, you know, I couldn't see any really bad behavior out of this Outrunner motor that they're using, but, you know, there was some more things that could be done for smoothing and things like that and it was early days for Fnatic, is basically what I was saying, and that they would be improving, and they certainly are delivering on that improvement now. This is, uh, I consider this much improved over the DD2 feeling. Now, I don't have my DD2 set up yet because this is a review for the DD1 they sent me, so yeah, I wanted to go ahead and get this done, but I'll be doing the same thing to my DD2 because obviously a little more tor torque, that's what I prefer over the DD1. So yeah, they definitely have a winner here with this software, now, what I'm going to show you here is the reason I have, and it, unfortunately, I really can't show you this stuff. And that's the, the problem with, I wish everybody was over here at the SRG, then we could, you know, you could get in here, you could feel what I was, what I was talking about. But by default, this SPR and DPR, the game spring effect and the damper effect strengths are all the way up to 100. So I'm going to go ahead and run them up to 100 again. Well, actually 100. That's too far. There we go. Let's get them up here to 100. All right. Once I did that, and then I start driving, and I'm on a smooth piece of, of track like this, not really a lot of bumps, and I turn the wheel back and forth, I can feel some, some roughness turning it back and forth like this, all right? And that was on a smooth piece of road with bumpy concrete right now. But right around center, if I, you just turn it back and forth, just weaving, there's some roughness around center. And you can feel that when you're going at speed through the corners too, because something just doesn't feel quite right. It feels a little off when you're running it. And I couldn't figure out what was going on because remember this stuff up here. Yeah. It's strange that you can feel that the spring and dampener. These are effects. Okay. So our racing doesn't do anything with these. It shouldn't be having any impact on how the wheel feels. But if I turn it all the way off again, and it took me a, little while, a while to find this because I know that these effects, our racing doesn't use them, so they shouldn't have anything to do with what I was feeling. But as soon as I do that, and I start weaving, it's gone. Nice and smooth, beautiful. Yeah, this really feels good. 
So I'm not sure why that happens, and I'm gonna try it on my DD2 when I get it mounted, see if I can replicate it on that too. But yeah, and I've already talked to a couple of guys at Fnatic about that, and they're looking into it to test it. You know, it could be anything. It could be the wheel itself. I mean, you know, who knows? The wheel makes itself. But anyway, it's cured is the important thing. And that's the great thing about this new firmware and software upgrade that we're getting now is we can fix things like that. And now it's, it's a wheel that, yeah, I think anybody would be happy to be driving with this wheel the way that you can tune it now. And I can't wait to get this on the DD2 because it really feels, you know, it's, it's just a whole different wheel really now. <laughs> so as you can tell, I'm pretty impressed by what they've done here with the firmware based on my previous experiences when I was doing my DD2 review. I mean, I knew that it had a lot of potential, but you know, just catching those slides, just, oh man. And you can see, I like a lot of ac activity in my wheel. <laughs> I like a very active wheel because it, it communicates with me quicker and I'm able to respond faster. Not everybody likes it like that. And some people might look at these settings that I have and go, man, you're out of your mind running the wheel like that. But that's the way I like it. Now, another side effect of the way I like to run settings is there is some oscillation being induced here. All right, because the more detail you get and the higher power you're running, the, more, the easier it is to get some oscillation. But it's really handling it pretty well. In fact, that didn't, that wasn't even a good example of it, was it? <laughs> Let's go down here and get some speed up. Yeah. And then we'll, once we get around this corner up here, we should have some good speed. Then we'll see about the oscillations. All right, here we go. All right, here we go. Nice straight. See, it actually catches it pretty good. I mean, see that? I'm in a slide, but once I let go of the wheel, it, the oscillations didn't get out of control. They actually came back and forth and then finally dampened out as the car slowed down. So it's doing a great job with oscillations here, I think, compared to where it was before when I was using the DD2. So again, this new firmware upgrade, if you don't have it on your DD or on your podium wheel, but whether it's a DD1 or DD2, then you're missing out. You need to stop what you're doing and go do it because it really is that much of an improvement over the firmware that I was running before and the drivers. They've really done a lot of work to this and it's been a while too since I did that review so I'm sure they've been working long hours trying to get this sorted and of course they'll continue to prove, improve on it and fine-tune these filters as it goes along. I mean Fnatic has a whole you know department that does this as far as the programming and stuff. They certainly have the, the the wherewithal to get it done and it, this is proof in the pudding right here it really is a nice experience or a great experience to use these or at least the dd1 i'm sure the dd2 is going to be even better from my point of view because of the extra power but yeah i am impressed with this i'm still a little bit uh, on the on the fence about that linearity filter i mean but some people are probably going to love it you know it's just but basically to me it seems like it just shuts down or cuts down the force feedback a bit and yeah, and that's, I mean, you can do that anyway, right? But I'm sure there's some filtering in there that I'm just not realizing at this moment. And some engineer at uh, Fnatic is going to be uh, saying, he doesn't know what he's talking about, which does this, this, this. But I can only tell you what I feel as an analog person. Right. So there it is, the driving demonstration. Again, if you don't have this, this firmware, these, this driver package rather installed yet, you need to stop what you're doing. Just go get it and, and make it happen because it is that much of an improvement on the performance of this wheel. And right now, this DD1 is, is doing a great job. I mean, I could live with the DD1, even if I didn't have a DD2. I could live with this and be happy with it, mostly. <laughs> if I didn't already know about other stronger wheels, and that's what I like. So, yeah, I think um, they've done a great job here. And, yeah, I think, uh, you know, I'll, I'll do some driving footage of me doing some laps but uh, in, in talking about the basic overall feel. But, yeah, they've just done a great job with this. And the live tuning session, I'm going to post my settings. I'm going to be brave here and post them. So, yeah, if and you know how that is. Sometimes people come out and say, you know, you don't know what you're talking about. But everybody's different. It's all subjective. And you can try it. You may like it. You may not. Remember, this is the DD1 in the Ferrari 488 GT3 at iRacing at Sebring. So that doesn't mean it's going to carry over to other games or other tracks and cars because all of them are a little bit different, it seems. So yeah, we'll just do a little driving and not me talking and uh, just a short view of that. And I might dub over it a little bit. And then we'll, yeah, we'll just get that done. So here we are in iRacing at Sebring in the Ferrari 488 GT3. All right, so the 352 driver package, improved force feedback latency, 
force feedback linearity. And, you know, you can tell right away that there's a marked improvement in the performance, overall performance of how the wheel is behaving. And I think one of the big things here was the increased resolution of the force feedback signal. So we're going from an 8-bit to a 16-bit now. So, yeah, that's you can feel that right away. It's just more immediate as far as the force feedback feelings that you're getting. When I was going through the S's here, you can feel how the wheels, the front tires rather, get light as you push them to the limits of their traction more accurately. The road surface and the bumps, and this is a great track to actually demo that, is you know more crisp, it's clearer, it's everything is just a little bit more, it seems like the, the wheelbase is a little bit more aware overall across the board. And yeah, going from 8-bit to 16-bit will definitely give you the opportunity to do that. And I think that's a big move for them here. Now, also the extra f filters that we've got in here, the linearity filter that gives you, you know, it knocks off the peaks a little bit on the force feedback to try to give you a more, you know, a more balanced force feedback signal, especially in the high force feedback peak areas in turns where you've got high speed turns and things like that. It's, again, it's one of those things that is very subjective to use. I don't use it. I, I turned it off after I, I tested it for a while, and I prefer to have it off, but everybody's a little different. Also, the interpolation filter, which is, this is big too. That, that was the biggest change to me as far as when it comes to filters. I think we're going to go over here to the ring here in a minute too, and we're going to drive a little bit over there. Less bumpy, more smooth sections <laughs> over there. And uh, yeah, so here we have the ring. And... Yeah, the it's, it's like when I, was, when I run the SimuCube 2, it's like the reconstruction filter, the same kind of thing happening with the interpolation filter for Fanatic. So it's, it just smooths things out. You know, it takes um, the, the sharpness where there's, you feel like it's too sharp and just smooth things out overall the whole performance of the wheel. And you can tell the difference with it off and with it one two three going through the steps of the filter all the way up to you know I, I ran it as high as eight in some cars and again again this is super subjective as far as where you would run the filter when you're using it but i ran it anywhere from five to eight depending on the car and the track i was on rougher tracks i would put more of it in a smoother track like this one i would back it off to like five and you know again it depends on the car and how the car set up to all this kind of comes together how you're going to use this interpolation filter so yeah hats off for for coming up with these improvements on the wheels performance it really does make a difference it's noticeable difference and i can't wait to get the dd2 back on here and then i'm going to update it and see how it does but i'm sure it's going to be very similar because these two wheel bases are pretty much identical except for being detuned as far as the torque goes so looking forward to that and you know I said it was early days in my review, original review of the DD2 for Fanatic when it came to direct drive wheels and using the force feedback filters and things like that, things like that rather. And I knew that, you know, Fanatic would bring, you know, all their forces to bear here, which they, they're, they're pretty big, so they have some, some good uh, resources and make this wheel even better. And this driver update certainly shows how they can do that. And I'm sure they'll keep improving as they move forward. So yeah, let's go ahead and get on to the final thoughts. Final thoughts on the Podium DD1 wheelbase from the guys at Fnatic. When I reviewed the DD2 Podium wheelbase a few months ago, I said I thought the outrunner motor in it was a good one for delivering force feedback cues, and I could not find any bad habits in its overall performance. I also said that it was early days for Fnatic as far as direct drive products were concerned but I was sure they would bring the full might of the Fnatic machine to bear when it came to developing firmware for it. The 352 driver update is an excellent example of what Fnatic can do and what their Podium DD wheelbases are capable of delivering. If you currently own a Podium DD wheelbase, you should install the new driver and firmware as soon as you can. You will see that it has a noticeable improvement of any previous driver distributions. This package contains updates that are a must-have. All you have to do is read the distribution notes to see how much has changed here. Of course, all that information doesn't mean much <laughs> if you can't feel any change. No worries here. It is, to me, a very noticeable improvement in all-around performance 
for the podium wheelbases in general. Filtering has been improved and new filters are also present. Now, it has a linear filter that is a good one if you want to tame some of the spikes you get in certain conditions. I tried it for a while, but I think I'm going to leave it off for now. The interpolation filter is one that I do use and is quite effective at smoothing out overall force feedback delivery. While not stepping on the detailed force feedback that is vital to know what a car is doing when you are pushing hard. So, you certainly want to implement it in your own Fanalab configurations. The DD1 wheelbase is basically a detuned DD2 wheelbase, having a peak torque of 20 newton meters instead of the 25 newton meters the DD2 has. It has a three year warranty instead of a five year warranty of the DD2. And of course, there is a $300 price difference, with the DD1 coming in at around $1,200 plus shipping. As you saw in the closer look, they also weigh about the same. The only difference coming from the weight of the DD1's aluminum panels compared to the DD2's carbon ones. If you're on the fence about which one to buy, it won't be an easy decision. The DD1 is a great wheelbase and will please most sim racers out there, I think, and can deliver all the torque most would ever want. No matter what podium wheelbase you do choose, with the new driver and firmware updates installed, it will give you a very good DD force feedback experience. I'm Barry Rowland. Thanks again for watching the Sim Racing Garage channel. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And if you would like to help support what I do here at the SRG, visit my website at simracinggarage.com.